Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam I be again, she doing political commentary for the media speaks. And not only do we have the Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner, we have the Dunce Cap of the Year announcement. Now, this is normally earlier in February after using the first month of the year to vote. And I had a power cord die, so you guys actually got an extension. I told you to vote on who was going to win the dunce cap of the year. You pick one of the 12 stories, 12 months in the year, and you pick which one you think is the dumbest. Now, I announced it again and again and again. Hundreds of people have seen the video between the two channels and the share. Only one person voted out of the hundreds of people that watched that show. That has never happened on the show before. So, Adam Celine, A-D-A-M-S-E-L-E-N-E, -E -E, you have won. Let me make sure I'm on uh, the fact cam here. You have won an ounce of silver, my friend. I need to know where to send it. Uh, the correct views on hotmail.com. Adam Celine, thank you. It's Adam Celine, go ahead and make sure that you tell me where to send it. The winner, and I'm going to have to make the hat the following week. I had a power cord die, so I'm behind myself in these hats that I'm making. Um, the story that he voted for was for the Florida. Uh, the Florida uh, Child Protective at CPS. And uh, again, if you haven't seen that story, it's, it was it was uh, it's the dust cap of the year. Um, Adam Celine, you win. Next show or uh, two shows from now, I'll have the hat and the presentation ready for that. Which brings us to our show now, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award Show. If you're new to the show, sit back and get ready to listen to the biggest collection of idiots ever. Anywhere on the internet. Every month, I bring you the dumbest people who have ever lived. I promise you. And uh, this will not disappoint. I give them to you uh, in no particular order except for the last one. The last one is the winner. It gets this. You don't get to see it yet. It gets the dunce cap, which you don't get to see all of yet. It gets all that mailed to them. I have mailed dunce caps to the Pentagon. I have mailed them to the White House. I have mailed them to the FBI. I have mailed them to judges, police stations, anybody who earns it. And here are the ones that didn't quite earn it. But oh my God, are they stupid? Al Salazar Marine Corps ordered to make job titles gender neutral. Prison Planet. The U.S. Marine Corps is under orders to integrate. I can talk today. Integrate both male and female recruits at boot camp training and must alter job titles to adapt to a more general gen, gender neutral tone by April. So, ISIS are teaching children how to use explosives. If you don't believe me, look it up. They are setting up the detonators that are killing so-called spies in a car. We are teaching our soldiers, or our thankfully children, to be gender neutral because you may hurt somebody's feelings and be triggering. The Marine Corps, no less. The mandate is announced in the January 1st memo from Navy Secretary Ray Mavis to the Commandant of the Marine Corps as the department to submit a detailed implementation plan to address the gender integration officer and enlisted basic training. In this submission, I identify specifically where, if anywhere, this training is already integrated, where it is separated, and how long it will truly take to fully integrate these training. In other words, they're spending an enormous amount of time removing man from titles such as infantrymen, riflemen, or midshipmen. They are spending precious money dealing with ridiculous, ridiculous issues at a time like Donald Trump says that our military has been ground down to such a degree that it couldn't possibly get much worse. We're dealing 
with gender neutrality in the Marine Corps. The Marines, for crying out loud. NBCnews.com, who'd expect it from the Air Force? I'm kidding. Private jets tagged with graffiti at L.A. airport. Now, the reason this got the dumdy is these people are millionaires, and they're complaining, and I, get, I don't think the vandals, I think they're caught, they should get popped. But what they're about to do is spend millions of dollars, I'm sure, repainting the airplane. As if a little bit of graffiti is going to make it immediately crash to the ground. They make it sound like it's money they have to spend. Vandals who broke into Van Nuys Airport Sunday night covered three different multi-million dollar corporate jets with graffiti, the second such incident at the Los Angeles Air Film in the last two years. Uh, they were tagged on their fuselages, tails, and wings with URA and a large 872. Other smaller monikers sprayed in blue and black paint on the panes included URAF, Mark B, and Glock uh, dollar sign. Primary estimates range from tens of thousands of dollars to potentially millions of dollars. Yeah, because we all know that graffiti, there you see it on Fact Camp, graffiti will immediately cause a plane to crash to the ground. A bunch of rich, prissy bastards. How many of you listening to this would happily take a plane no matter what was spray painted on it? I swear, you could put something sickening on it, like Hillary for president. It's still a plane. I'm sorry, I told you it was sickening. Um, Victor Skinner, moving on to the idiots. University seeks to broaden free speech by banning offensive costumes. That is to say, any costume. They've all but destroyed Christmas in the public. And now they're going to destroy the fun that is Halloween. And that's what it is, because most of us have no interest in the actual... They, you know, they used to slaughter children on Halloween. I'm sure they did. I, 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 I don't think dressing up in a Halloween costume makes you a Satanist any more than wearing a cross makes you a Christian. But what they're doing here is, remember when students used to have a pair? Remember when they used to rebel and stand up for free speech and were worried about what's happening in our college now we've become a bunch of mamby pamby panty wastes that need our own safe space every time somebody hurts our tender gender neutral feelings. The Edinburgh University Student Union claims that it was working to broaden free speech when it banned students recently from wearing any type of costume that might offend anyone. So taking free speech away broadens free speech. That's great. Students can no longer dress up like Native Americans, Arabs, Nazis, or depict brutal police brutality because those costumes are based on racial or cultural stereotypes. Yes, that's why they're funny and that's why they should be worn. Students are also now prohibited from wearing any outfits that mock or are based on stereotypes of disabled people or cross-dressing to the point of humor. No, but uh, you, you wouldn't be able to tell. I mean, look at Jenner. That guy's a mess. Yes, I said guy. That means dressing like Caitlyn Jenner is out, as is a Chris Brown costume, because they use gender-based or sexual violence for the purpose of humor. So you can't dress up like Chris Brown and Ray Hackless. Um, God, I hate those two. The music is just dreadful. The New Rules, which also ban costumes depicting Pocahontas, Mexicans, black-faced cat men, gangsters, and others, is the latest in a long line of politically correct edicts. Now, see, I'm part Italian. I'm part Mexican. I'm sorry. Bring me the sombrero. Uh, be the gangster with the spaghetti and meatball prop. I'm sorry. I'm not a panty waist that needs his own free space. I'm sure I'll live. Jim Hoft, Gateway Pundit, moving on with idiots. I'm going through these because I don't want anyone to log out. I really want you guys to stay with me for all of these because these are, I'm telling you, they get duller as we go. Nuts. George Soros says we should not fear Muslim extremists because they kill us. That seems to me to be a good reason to fear someone. Again, not all Muslims. He said extremists. Now, I know a lot of people that are terrified of, say, spiders or snakes. They, by and large, depending on where you're listening to this at, Unless you run into a water moccasin, you're not likely to end up with a poisonous snake bite here in Ohio. 
if you were to get bitten by a snake, it's probably not as bad as catching your fingers in a pair of pliers when you're working on your car or getting stung by a bee. Terrified of it. Spiders, which absolutely, unless you get a black widow or a um, wolf spider up in Ohio, you're not going to be in that much grief. Terrified of them. Like shrieking. And yet, you hear nothing. You shouldn't fear the person with the bomb. Far-left billionaire George Soros was an early supporter of failed President Barack Obama. Soros was behind the Occupy Wall Street movement. He was also behind Black Lives Matter, which, of course, is uh, a parody of itself at this point. Soros was behind the IRS targeting scandal, and his funds, he funds leftist media operations, including NPR and Media Matters. But now, for the rag known as The Guardian, we'll get to other rags later, Soros argues that the West should not fear the Islamists just because they kill us. No. Why, why, why else would you kill them? Friends, what else is it saying? You can see the whole letter there. But the point is, he said, scientists have discovered that emotion is an essential component of human reasoning. Yeah, it's just our emotions that make us fear the man with the bomb. He said extremists. He didn't say you shouldn't fear Muslims because of uh, uh, they blow you up. Because, no, the ones who are blowing you up, you should not fear because they are blowing you up. That is mind-blowingly stupid. WashingtonTimes.com. Black professor chastises white Americans. Admit to the racist poison inside of you. Now, I don't know how many people listening to this caught my uh, piece on white privilege. If you haven't, type in correct views, white privilege. Um, it's part two of three. Um, it's on the, uh, you'll see the banner, the thumbnail. I laid down exactly what is wrong with races and interaction in this country. So I'm not going to go over it again now. Um, I'm just, just beyond saying it's a divisionary tactic. How's that? Well, we have an idiot here. An Emory University professor has penned an open letter to white Americans asking them to admit to the racist poison inside of them that's to blame for the long history of black suffering. This reminds me of the geniuses that are, were saying during Beyonce's very racist halftime show that America was holding blacks down when almost all of the people on the football field that we have made millionaires by buying their merchandise, for instance, are black. Do I, do I begrudge them that? No, they earned it. I'm not racist. This bonehead is trying to imply that there is white privilege and that whites are busy holding blacks down, which is ridiculous. I've never worked for a place where the blacks run in the same mess I was. In Dear White America, they don't want you to realize it's a mess, so they keep you fighting each other. In Dear White America, published by New York Times philosophy professor George Yancey, called the letter a gift to white people. But the gift could be heavy to bear, but he gives it freely. To take a deep breath and make a space for my voice in the deepest part of your psyche. He sounds like a, a, a Jim Jones trying to brainwash you. Believe everything I say. Try to listen to practice being silent as I lie to you and give you BS. He admits to being a sexist. I have failed women. I have failed to speak out when I should have. I have failed to engage critically and extensively their pain and suffering in my writing because it's so painful to be a woman. I have failed to transcend the rigidity of gender roles in my own life. I have failed to challenge these poisonous assumptions that women are inferior to men. I don't know that anybody's ever assumed that, but he insists that we have, or at least he says he does. White people should not shield themselves from their own racism. Practice being vulnerable. And if you're not racist, just lie and say you are. It's painful to let go of your white innocence and use this letter as a mirror. <laughs> fractured or one that refuses to show you what you want to see and one that demands that you look at the lies that you tell yourself. I'm asking you to enter the battle of your white self. Yes, even though my family has no ties to uh, slave ownership whatsoever. 
Accept the racism within yourself. Accept all of the truth about what it means for you to be white in a society that created you. Yeah. Oh my God. Pure stupidity. These are the people we have as professors in our country. Friends, I've never seen. Does anybody believe this tripe at all? There is no white privilege. We are all being hosed equally by these same people who are manipulating us to fight over race. Um, again, see more of it. Type in correct views, white privilege. I did. I spoke on it for about a half hour, and it's one of my best works. Free Beacon Rape Survivor asks Obama, why can't you see gun restrictions make my kids and I less safe? I love this woman. And again, the dumb D here going to uh, Obama. I have a bad view. Do you believe the, the fundamental notion that Listen a good guy with a gun or a good woman with a gun it is an important bulwark against a bad person with a gun. And, and before you answer, I want you to meet uh, Kimberly Corbin. Kimberly was broke into her apartment. She testified. All right, she was uh, right. If I play too much, they'll censor me. Purchased a firearm of my choosing and being able to carry it out wherever my, me and my family are. It seems like my basic responsibility as a parent at this point. Listen to I that. have been unspeakably victimized once already, and I refuse to let that happen again to myself or my kids. And she goes on, it's four, four minutes and 420, it's four, 420 long, but this is by Jennifer Lips. At the CNN Town Hall, uh, again, she stood up, you saw that. Here, here's her whole statement. If I play too much of it, they'll censor me on, on YouTube. It seems my basic responsibility of a parent. Can't you see that they're putting, that, the, that these restrictions that you're putting make it harder for me to own a gun or harder for me to take what I need to be actually just making my kids and I less safe? She handed it to him with common sense. And don't tell me guns don't work. Obama is protected because people may want to kill him. Just because hundreds of people may want to kill Obama, and I do, again, I'm not one of them. That's not, not the way the show rolls. Um, there are hundreds of people that want to kill Obama. Does that mean that just because there's a few people that might want to harm her and her family that she's not entitled to the same protection? That makes no sense at all. Um, Paul Joseph Watson, CNN op-ed calls out Obama for calls for Obama, excuse me, to declare a national state of emergency to gut the Second Amendment. This is brought to you by Change Transportation. Uh, make sure you call Change Transportation, and when you do, let them know where you're going. Let them know you heard about it from the correct views, and you'll get a discount. CNN op-ed piece. By a leading gun control advocate has called on President Obama to declare a national state of emergency so that he can gut the Second Amendment. You know, your God-given right did not come to you from Obama, did not come to you from the Constitution, was told to you in the Constitution. It was a right given to you prior to the writing of the Constitution in that God created the right and gave it to you. Elliot Feynman of the National Gun Victims Action Council, made up largely of people who are shooting each other in gangs, wants the president to follow through on his recent gun control efforts by monitoring ammunition sales and banning those on the terror watch list from buying guns. Yes, I said it. Uh, most of the gun violence in this country that isn't self-defense is uh, tied to gang violence. It's, it's, it's simple truth. And the prohibition on drugs, which should not be here. So this could be achieved without congressional approval by Obama enacting a national state of emergency that scares the gun lobby and pro-lawmakers. Now, do you know anybody that owns a gun that is going to give the gun up, especially in a national state of emergency? If that sounds stupid to you, make sure Elliot Feynman at the National Gun Victims Action Council hears from you. That's why I do these shows. I do them so that, so that I can show you the stupidity that is extant in our country. And then you can contact these people and do something. Gateway Pundit, another, another dumbie for Obama. I remember hearing once, any veteran. Oh, I'm popular and I hate being popular. My ass, you hate being popular. You wouldn't be in Pearl Jam if you hated being popular. Anybody hear me here? Obama just did it. 
Unreal. Obama says the cele that the celebrity gets old. Not the not not being a celebrity. The celebrity gets old. On the same week, he does Gorillas and Jerry Seinfeld shows. It's fair to say we've probably never seen a more narcissistic and oblivious president in U.S. history. In the latest taped interview, Barack Obama says he focused on safety. The world is on fire. Prosperity. Americans make less money today than when he became president seven years ago. And tolerant race riots are breaking out all across the country. I love the way that's worded. Tolerant race riots. Going to be tolerant. Let's riot. Obama then says the celebrity gets old. And in the same week that he just did the Bear Gillis show and a driving show with Jerry Seinfeld. So it gets old being a celebrity. And yet where does he place himself? directly in celebrity status above and beyond what his job is to make himself more of a celebrity. Alan Salazar, he gets another story in on this one. Uh, Prison Planet City demands firearm applicants write an essay explaining why they need a gun. Uh, let me ask you, do you write an essay explaining why you have the right to free speech? Do you write an essay explaining why someone has to have a warrant to come into your house? Do you understand that these are rights? Right? Okay. And then why would you need one for your God given right to own the God? Maybe you want to defend yourself from the crazy thugs outside your house shooting each other. And no, I don't mean color because there are plenty of white thugs shooting each other. There are plenty of Asian thugs shooting each other. They are thugs. A new policy in a Massachusetts town imposes burdensome steps on residents who want to obtain a license to carry a firearm an essay exam, and a $1,000 training seminar, $1,100. So now you have to pay for your God-given right. Pro-firearm supporters in all last Tuesday pleaded with police and city administrators to ease new gun regulations, which, among other things, now require an essay of anyone applying for an unrestricted firearm license. And someone wrote, I will never write an essay to get my rights as an American citizen. Resident Dan Gannon reportedly stated at the city council meeting last week, according to the Lowell Sun. No, should he? Um, again, uh, get a hold of this. I'm telling you where it's at. Lowell, L-O-W-E-L-L. -L. Call them. Call their city council. Call the mayor's office. Let them know this is an infringement. An essay when you're in school is when you write something, you turn it in and they grade it. Attorney Richard Chambers told Fox News, this is an essay. And it's also just another layer of bureaucracy they've tracked to block people from exercising their rights. And that is exactly true. Absolute mind rot, friends. Truth revolt. Caleb Howe. Melissa Harris Perry, who's never said anything right in her whole life. Confiscate guns. This is one of the big dummies. This is one of the reasons I told you to hold on. Confiscate legal guns to stop men shooting their wives. Not to stop wives from shooting their husbands. Second of all, what? <sighs> Melissa Harris Perry's got to be one of the dumbest people ever. Perry was conducting a panel on gun control and suggested to her law enforcement guest that law enforcement should be first to demand gun confiscation. Because now they have to assume any citizen might be armed. After being confronted with the fact that criminals who police are faced with are usually using illegal guns, not legal guns, Harris Perry parries that men are shooting their wives with perfectly legal guns. Yeah, because that prior to her saying it, nobody even thought of it. John Shane, well, do you have a lot of Second Amendment officers? I happen to favor carrying a gun myself. I don't think there's much wrong with it. The reality is that we are going to keep the illegal guns away from people. It's a very easy thing to keep guns. She interrupts what she loves to do. A lot of people shoot their wives with perfectly legal guns, he says, and. So they wouldn't if they didn't have them. So, so. And then Shane says, but we're not going to take guns away from people. We're just going to make it harder for law-abiding citizens to get them. They wouldn't if they didn't have them. So because a few people abuse free speech, no one should have free speech. Because some people have a meth lab in their house 
the police should be allowed to knock on everyone's door to see if you have a math lab. That, that's the reasoning that this bonehead Paris used here. Hey, idiot, idiot. Uh, CampusReform.org. Portland Community College to devote an entire month to whiteness shaming. Of course, pushing the lie of white privilege of which there is none. We are all equally hosed. From birth to death, I may add. Portland Community College, make sure you get a hold of them, call them, write them. It's why I do the show. I'm not here for my health. Portland Community College has designated a Whiteness History Month, even WHM, an educational project exploring how constructive whiteness creates racial inequality. There is no constructive whiteness. That is a lie in and of itself. This a co- these are colleges trying to give out free A's to get people to take stuff and make them feel good so they come to class every day, so they can learn something of no value whatsoever in the real world, even if Donald Trump does manage to get the jobs back. Why in this history month, context, consequences, and change is a multidisciplinary, district-wide educational project examining race and racism through an exploration of the construction of whiteness, its origins and heritage, PCC states on its website, which is full of crap. Scheduled for the month of April, the entire month, the project seeks to inspire innovators and practical solutions to community issues and social problems of racism, such as blaming whitey. It says that the project is not a celebratory endeavor like Heritage Month but is rather an effort to change our campus climate. Yeah, by shaming Whitey. Not only does the concept of whiteness allow those who are socially deemed white to accrue more benefits, untrue, the page asserts, but those benefits are accrued at the expense of people of color, also not true. None of what this thing teaches has any truth in it, and yet it's considered a college program. God, and then people wonder why we're voting for Trump in droves. Why is a libertarian voting for a populist? Because somebody has got to bring common sense back to this country. Because nothing I just read to you and that has any basis in truth at all. There is no white construct. There is no white privilege. There is no special anything for white people. We are all under the same outsourcing issues. We are all under the same death of the middle class. So I don't want to hear it. Dailycaller.com. The next big thing, this is even dumber, fat studies courses, fat awareness groups spread across university. Guess what? I'm a little fat. Guess what? I shouldn't be. You don't need to go around and fat is good. There's nothing wrong with being fat. Yes, there is. First of all, it's ugly. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. It's ugly. Second of all, you're killing yourself. The fatter you are, the more you're killing yourself. So no, it probably should not be considered normal. Do I think that if someone is fat, they should be harassed and hounded and bothered and treated like crap? No, I had plenty of that when I was growing up. I'm slightly overweight. I used to be huge. I get it. But this is not the answer, people. This is a road to cancer, sugar, and heart disease. These blimps in the picture, no, that's not okay. They're killing themselves. Somebody's going to be without a wife or a sister over that. No, it's not good. Described as an emerging academic field that focuses on combating weightism, fat stigma, and weight-based depression of fat people, fat studies courses are popping up on college campuses across the country. Again, as a nation dies and there's nothing to teach anybody to do because there's no opportunity, these ridiculous things pop up. Typically found in women in gender studies departments, which never has any useful classes. That's why they usually have to thrust them on anyone who isn't a feminist. Fat studies courses don't study obesity as a leading cause of death in America, which it is. But rather approach fatness as a social justice issue and usually focus on fat liberation movements and activism as ways to combat the stigma attached to obesity. I agree with Steven Crowder. You are not going to change what we think is pretty by telling us that we think you should think it's pretty. You are also not going to stop a heart attack by saying that you are equal to somebody who is of normal body weight, therefore your heart must not be weightist and uh, die on you. 
During winter 2016 term that's happening now, Oregon State University, again, contact Oregon State University and let them know that they're a crappy institution, is offering a three-credit course simply titled Fat Studies. Three credits. Talk about an easy A and just smile and nod with all this insanity of which you know none of it's true. And then you're going to wonder why people are taking guns across the state lines without telling anybody so that they don't have to write an essay on how to get a gun. Now you're wondering why more and more people are questioning why they go to college. These stories all tie together. They all tie together how, how all of our institutions are ultimately betraying us. According to the website, the course frames weight-based oppression as a social justice issue, exploring forms of activism that counter weightism. How about fatty just lose weight and doesn't expect the rest of society to kiss their ever-widening ass? How about that? How about we do something to get the salt content out of our food so that when you eat like a normal person, which I actually do, you weigh a more normal weight. But no, let's just keep stuffing ourselves to the point of death and call it normal. My wife, I don't know what she eats, but the stuff that comes in a box, it's like salt and water. There's no food in it. And no, she's not fat. The point is it's, it's going to kill you. This food that we're eating has no nutritional value, and much of it is incredibly fattening. She just doesn't eat a lot. And again, I didn't marry a huge heifer. Why? Because while I don't wish them any ill, it just isn't pretty. And if you do find fat people pretty, then that is great. Because I don't want to go in the other direction, but I'm not going to sit here and promote it as healthy. I'm not going to do it. Campus reform, you will see UCSB to host discussion on safe spaces for fat gay men. Now, the gay men are ganging up, you see, on the fat gay men. So now, not only do fat people need their own safe space, but now fat gay men need their own safe space because of weightism and you don't like gay people. The University of California, Santa Barbara, will host a book discussion next week to discuss the anti-fat stigma that persists in American culture, especially for fat gay men. Mirth, girth, and the politics of stigma with idiot author Dr. Jason Witzel at Pace University. Pace, P-A-C-E, where you want to call and let them know that this kind of stuff is mind rot is being hosted by the UCSB Resource Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity. Yeah, because, you know, figuring out which hole you want to put it in needs an entire diversity training center. According to the event page on Facebook, 34 of the 199 students invited have indicated that they will attend. To be fat in a thin, obsessed gay culture can be difficult. But I thought gays were so understanding and so open. Never mind that gay people routinely are more misogynistic than straight men. You're supposed to talk about that. They sound like hip-hop artists. They're so misogynistic. The Research Center's description of the event begins, Despite affectionate in-group monikers for big gay men like chubs, bears, and cubs, the anti-fat stigma that persists in American culture at large haunts these individuals who often exist on the margins of gay communities. So we're going to waste time in college to understand the needs of whiny gay fat people. Again, I am nothing against fat people. I'm one of them. I am nothing against gay people. I'm not one of them. But this here is mind rot. Speaking of Crowler, who I think is the best journalistic writer writing today, new feminist cause words in the dictionary are triggering. Louder with Crowler. While women in Europe are being sexually assaulted, and there's links for all of this on fact cam, you can see them. While women in Europe are being sexually assaulted in record numbers by Muslim men, and the women have been blamed for it by the imams, which are the teachers of Islam, and unborn baby girls are being killed and their parts shipped for research, you may have missed the latest outrage of the day for feminists. Nope, it's not the Olympics letting gay men compete as women, believe it or not. Dig deeper. 
No, it's not letting trans women, which is men, using women's bathroom and being super creepy. It's a busy world full of sexism and grievances against women. So there's much to sort through. So what is the feminist priority this week? Words in the dictionary. I boop swastika you not. I love how he writes. You may have noticed this Twitter exchange between some anthropologist and the Oxford English Dictionary. Hey, at Oxford Words, that's a, you know, it's a tweet. Why is rabid feminist the usage example of a rabid in your dictionary? Maybe change that. It's from Michael Oman Reagan. If only there were words to describe how strongly you felt about feminism. By the way, rabbit isn't always negative, and your example sentences come from the real world use art definitions. This is from Oxford, the dictionary. Some individuals choose their fights with real actual people, but this guy picked a fight with a Twitter account of a dictionary. The Twitter account of a dictionary. Modern feminism happening. Rabid feminist is not the only example provided by the Oxford English Dictionary that didn't sit well with Omen Reagan. He also pointed to words such as shrill, the rising shrill of women's voices. Psych, I will never really fathom the women's psyche. And the housework, she still does all of the housework as examples that are of embedded within the language because they're written that way as an example in the dictionary. Having studied, studied social cultural linguistics, I know that dictionaries are not only describing language, they also describe and shape the way language and meaning is produced and standardized. Whether that is the intention of the publisher or not, Omen Reagan wrote, noting that Oxford is the default dictionary used by Apple Mac OS X operating system. Because you got to use a Mac when, you're, when you talk like this. Though, of course, being leftist who trumpeted the full faux horns as far as the ear can hear it, Oxford agreed to review the example. No word yet on if they're going to look into examples of words being applied unfairly towards men. So he writes, I love Crowder, and decided to open up his dictionary of his Mac to see what he could find. Brute! A savagely violent person or animal. He was a cold-blooded brute. Informal, cruel, unpleasant, sensitive, being unfeeling. Yes. Adjective. Male usage. Look at that. So how is that not a stereotype? Oxford has applied brute to the male pronoun, he writes, and I'm angry. Insane. In a state of mind that prevents normal perception, behavior, or social interaction, seriously mentally ill. Certifying patients as clinically insane, such as, example, he has gone insane. He writes again, what? Here again, insane is applied to male pronouns, except, of course, when applied to being foolish, and then it's applied to a woman. Monster. An imaginary creature that is typically large, ugly, and frightening. And the example is Christopher, male, is only one year old, is only a one year old, but already he is a little monster. So monsters are men, oh my god. So I can do a faux outrage, I can do the faux outrage thing too. All that requires is a caps lock key and some well placed exclamation points. I absolutely cherish the way that he writes. I, I can't tell you enough. I think he is one of the best writers extant today. So here you go, friends. We have, as my computer tries to freeze, we have a country that is locked into the most ridiculous of arguments. And if you think it can't get worse, it can. We have two stories left. And the second one is the winner of the dunce cap of the month. I want to give a shout out to Sticker Junkie, who sponsors the show. No do they sponsor the show. They make amazing stickers, absolutely freaking amazing. And when you go to get your stickers made, even if you have a rough idea, you're going to love what they come up with there. And if you type in the correct views, when you check out, 
you're going to get a discount as well. Go to StickerJunkie.com. Be glad that you did. The runner-up for the Dove Cap of the Month Award. This was the one I picked as the dumbest, but then it was talked about, and uh, we changed it to the following one. But get ready, friends. This speaks volumes about where our country is today. When you can um, break into somebody's house at will without a warrant, or get a warrant for a SWAT team and break into the wrong house and scar a baby with a smoke grenade, which has happened. When you get tickets and pull over for every minor infraction, when you live what is quickly becoming a police state, when you have a socialist likely to win the Democratic uh, nomination, this is this speaks volumes here. Kit Daniels' Bill of Rights birthplace has been partially demolished by a developer. The building as it stands now is rather indicative of the current state of our Bill of Rights. Serving as a microcosm of the Obama administration, a real estate developer partially demolished the reputed birthplace of the Bill of Rights. The developer, who gets mentioned as the Dundee runner-up, Triple Crown Corporation, if you want to get a hold of them, secured a permit to demolish a two-story building formerly known as James Bell Tavern in Silver Spring Township, Penn. But by the time a third of the building was destroyed, the city stopped the demolition because officials realized the Bill of Rights was conceived at the tavern in the 1788 meeting. How appropriate, the part of the building that has been torn down while other parts remain, commentator W.C. Handy wrote on the Sentinel newspaper's comment line. We have a Congress that is so intent on destroying the Bill of Rights. The building as it stands now is rather indicative of our current Bill of Rights. Why not leave it there as the building as is to serve as a reminder to us all? Another commentator pointed out that just like the Obama administration, the development stopped the demolition for now, but may continue in the near future. Triple Crown sued the township back in the late 90s over serving tapping fees and we're now sue again to clear the path for commercial development. So go ahead and contact Triple Crown Corporation and ask them why, now that they know this, they are so intent on destroying this piece of history. Otherwise, I'm talking to you all for nothing. I swear to God. And that brings us to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award winner. Yes. This Dunce Cap, I'm telling you, well earned. Dum, 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 de dum. It goes to Rolling Stone and Sean Penn. Sean Penn couldn't keep his mouth shut about El Chapo. El Chapo is now in prison. Page6.com. Now, I know that El Chapo is a despicable human being. There he is on uh, on uh, back to camp. Now, he wouldn't even exist, of course. He wouldn't even exist if the drug war wasn't what it is. But he's the 14th richest man in the world because us in America, uh, excuse me, America and Mexico have no decent gun laws or drug laws, excuse me. They create these people because people are going to use drugs. You just have to monitor how they do it. That's not my point. If uh, even the, the lowest of rag has some kind of journalistic merit, there have been dictators. There have been countless people interviewed. You can interview Bashar Assad, who they're trying to throw out of Syria. It is journalistic standards that even if the person is a crappy person, you do not do anything that would get them arrested, triangulated in a phone call for one thing. To the people that you interview. If you do, it's a sign that your paper doesn't have any integrity. Doesn't know what it's doing. It doesn't know how to handle its sources. Well, listen to this. And Sean Penn, we all know he's a despicable human being. It seems that he would write for such a leftist crap mag as a Rolling Stone, as a, as a music fan and a rock and roll fan. I have been so utterly let down by the tripe that is in this magazine that I could die praising mindless hip-hop, pretending that Beyonce has a voice, putting Kanye West 
out as Jesus Christ. I remember in 1982 when The Who was breaking up. My uh, Even at nine years old, I was a music fan. My dad bought me a Rolling Stone magazine, and there was an article on lesbianism in it, which you probably didn't know. That's how they get into people's heads. Am I against lesbians? No, but you get my point. So I'm reading about these whiny lesbians saying, it's easy for men to hate gay men, but they ignore lesbian women. I was about nine years old, I started to realize that I like the female body. And the young boys find what young boys find. In porn magazines, women do things with women, I had no clue. I had seen this, these kind of dirty pictures prior to the Rolling Stone magazine by like mere weeks by Dumbluck. And I remember thinking that women on women is considered attractive to men. So I, I, I picked up even at a young age that there was something wrong with his magazine. At nine years old, I couldn't have known they were indoctrinating you to the left. They have just they have heralded the destruction of music. They have not been worth reading since the bigger format took over, the smaller format took over, and they have been a leftist rag before that. The mighty have fallen. There was a time that Rolling Stone mattered. They are terrible. Even my best friend Dan canceled his subscription. They are a useless, major label, ass-kissing rag of no merit whatsoever. And they have been called out repeatedly and sued openly for wrong stories in the past, printing lies, defamation. They are tied to every leftist organization in the world that wants to bring in socialism, high taxes, and that believe in global warming. And now this. Sean Penn turned to Beverly Hills' famed polo lounge into a war room for strategizing how to handle his El Chapo controversy over Golden Globes weekend. Yeah, because El Chapo's little gang is probably going to kill him. There's rumors that he works for the CIA, which I'll get to in a minute would be uh, very odd. While Spice said he consulted with a team that included a former State Department staffer and a political consultant, the star perhaps neglected to consider half of Hollywood could hear everything he was saying. So he was bragging in a loud voice about how cool he was and how big he was and how amazing he was. So he went ahead and started bragging about interviewing Al Chapo, who has escaped from prison twice. And got him arrested again. Now he'll probably get life in prison. They might even kill him. And again, I'm not saying he was a good man. I'm saying that this is a reflection of very bad journalism from a very bad journalist. He's a very bad writer. He's a crappy, arrogant, conceited, dirty person. He was running around like Woodward and Bernstein, uh, Nixon, at the Washington Post, strategizing as much as possible, even before the Al Chapel story broke said an amused spy. They were loudly talking about El Chapo, and everyone was thinking, is this his next project? Of course, then the story hit. But as T now this is tried to lie his way out of it. As Penn's team met daily, it was like bad journalism 101. They're meeting in the middle of the polo lounge, and they are talking so loud. The place was packed for the Golden Globes. He was trying to sound good, trying to get laid, trying to talk among people and how cool he was. Don't you love me? I'm Sean Penn. I interviewed Al Chapo. Want to hear about it? I'm going to get him arrested like an idiot. He was standing up while talking to them. Couldn't they think of any place else to meet? No, he wanted the attention. Also spotted at the hotel over the weekend were Miley Cyrus and Randy Jackson. So th th this is what this genius has brought. This is what, uh, basically, he bragged, tried to pump himself up and did this. So I'm, I'm now making the dunce caps. Christelle made the last dunce cap. I told everybody it was mailed out. It isn't mailed out. She lied to me and didn't mail it. So now my credibility is on the line because I say that I mailed these out. And the last one that was supposed to get it didn't. Trust me, they are going to get it. I'm going to mail it Friday. This is the Dunce Cap of the Month Award now, as I try to recover my credibility. I have set out so many of these dunce. Look at it. Look at my drawing of El Chapo behind bars. It says, thanks, Sean. Look at my Rolling Stone logo. 
I do really good. And I crossed out. Then I wrote the music note here. I wrote, P.S. Hey, Rolling Stone, we hated the Kanye cover. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. And here's what I wrote. Here is the Delta Cap of the Month Award certificate superimposed in the back. Of course, El Chapo and Sean Penn. This is what I'm sending to them. Dump Cap of the Month Award. This Dump Cap of the Month Award goes to Rolling Stone Magazine and Sean Penn for bragging about bragging a man into what is likely a life behind bars or a death sentence. Now, while Shorty, that's El Chapo, may in fact get what is due to him, according to many, it does not change the fact that your magazine has gone beyond the normal screed of mindless hip-hop stars, talentless sugar pop bands, and leftist dribble, now into the realm of utterly poor journalistic standards. Sean Penn has always been one to brag, boast, and banter, I wrote, with little reason, and has now managed to have members whispering that he works for the CIA. However, anyone who actually took the torture to read this rag will quickly find that no writer there is likely to be employed anywhere but the local trash dump. Perhaps if you actually knew about things like triangulation and sources protection, then you may keep your subjects out of prison. Or better yet, stick to kissing Kanye's ass and destroying the legacy of your once great magazine. Friends, you're listening to the correct news. <laughs> Sam I B. the Ganji of the Media Speaks signing off. Uh, please donate to the show if you can. Go to the correct news on hotmail.com. I'll let you know where to send it because every penny you give to me goes towards a better show thank you friends for listening that's your dunce cap of the month i'll get you with the dunce cap of the year i'll get to it next week love you friends good night comment out share god bless